I can see there's a good batch there if they've got the right guidance. You know, all those things just equal keen little surfers. <laughs> Wherever you go, you know there's a lineup, and you know you wait your turn and you'll be able to get a good wave. Rick's showed the way he's qualified twice, which is harder than doing it the first time. We've got the talent, but we just happen to be at the arse end of the world. <laughs> It's a cool place, the East Cape. There's not much around, it's all farmland and heads of headlands, so uh, everything's real basic around these areas. We're in Tokomaru Bay, and we might go try and surf this wave, because we're here. Typical Kiwi little town. Uh, as you can see, there's not much going on here. Looks like there's a little wave, I'm going to go see how it is. I'm going to see if Kehu can stand up. He's from Mount Monganui, so he's used to low knee height waves. Said he liked fur, took the mucky work. I kicked it to the curb, took the honey and swerve. Gee, I got all of the burn, money to earn. Swam pushing in the hood. Gee, I'm pulling the birds. Like, pull up and pull up the skirt. Shorty shot an Uber just to fill it with dirt. And still I walk back for the filling all killer. Novelty, eh? Bit of fun. Just me and the bro out in the middle of pretty much nowhere. Yeah, surf by ourselves. Can't say that too often these days. I say that like I'm an old bloke eh, and I've been around for a while. <laughs> this is the traditional New Zealand food, stock standard, steak pie, pastry around it with some sauce on top. Nothing more kiwi than this thing. I think it's pretty trippy too, like this is like a normal kiwi breakfast. It's acceptable at all times, brekkie lunch, dinner. Mm. I first met Kehu ages ago. I don't even think he knew how to introduce himself back when I met him. <laughs> yeah, we've grown up surfing together, so now we're on the QS and it's really refreshing to be in some overseas contest and hear a Kazi and the, the Māori accent, you know, it makes me feel like I'm at home, so I really enjoy kind of travelling with that kid or that man. <laughs> I feel like where you grow up surfing kind of influences the way you surf and your style of surfing for sure. In PR, it's a pretty powerful wave, so me and my friends kind of a bit heavy footed, I'd say. Quite scary as a young grommet to start surfing in PR. The West Coast just has a bit more rawness to it, I think. There's not a whole lot going on there, so that definitely pushed me to choose the surfing route. young age I really loved surfing and then I just kind of found my way into the comp scene and stuff so it wasn't really like a decision like I'm gonna do it I just kind of gradually started doing it and surfing is far more of a fun thing that I love to do than job it's just at this point in my life I'm starting to do it kind of professionally if you can do something you love like surfing it's a job you're not working being a professional surfer I spend about 10 months on the road, travelling around the world. When I do get to spend time at home, I like to spend time with my family and friends. And if I do have free time after that, I'll go chase waves around the country. It's looking pretty fun. It's just a little inconsistent. And oh my goodness, uncle's going to hit the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I know, this might be the spot. Might go and have a look around the corner. Probably head out here, it looks pretty fun. As you can see, it's really uncrowded. These lucky fellas get waves <laughs> everywhere, eh? Heaps of options, but there is a toll to it. It's cold. <laughs> Gloves on, rugged up, triple layers. The cuzzy over here, Tommy's fucking bare feet, shorts. When it goes south, all the wind comes from the mountain and all of the cold air just comes straight into the ocean. So you're sitting in the water with this icy wind chill, which would be pretty gnarly sometimes. <laughs> It's 
definitely got a different vibe. The vibes, I think there's way more hearty and raw down here. So waves are like a little bit heavier, a bit different compared to say the East Coast. It's really good because you know wherever you go, you wait your turn and you'll be able to get a good wave. Whereas you go somewhere else like Raglan, it's just a free for all. Oh my goodness, waves are cooking. We might go out for another one. Can't resist. <laughs> Each of the Māori boys are out there too holding the fort. They gave us some waves, so it was on. <laughs> oh. Shit, more oh, empty. <laughs> Thirsty fella. <laughs> this is the five star toilet. Taranaki special, this is. Oh, that's an actual kind of toilet now. Used to just be this hole in ground. Upgrade teams. In New Zealand, we call these things a long drop. So a long drop is pretty much just a hole in the ground. Pop a squat on it, just like that, and go for gold. Taranaki, there's the farming culture and the surfers down here that tie together. All the surf spots down the coast are all on farmland. So we're really lucky that all the farmers have let us surf down them and that's why it's got such a unique feel to the waves. There's obviously the rules when you go through a farm, shut the gate, respect the farmer's property, which pays off because we get to surf some of the best waves in New Zealand when it's on. Obviously I love surfing, I really want to take it a little bit further but I'm probably just going to try and do an apprenticeship and then travel off my own back because it's pretty hard to find sponsors that are happy to pay for you to travel. Two years where I try to chase the QS. But I also really love free surfing, so I would definitely try and find a good balance of chasing comps and then staying a week or so after the event and free surfing my brains out at the best spots. Kind of go somewhere warm and tropical. And trying to work on the white boy tan. I don't think I can go tan, I think I just go red. <laughs> red like a crayfish. <laughs> And there's no ways for you to skate or jam some ball. <laughs> kind of have a young 2v2, but old mate's like 6'8", and Bill can shoot, so it's a little bit unfair for me and Elliot. The Olympics is a huge thing for me. It's, it's crazy, man. It's so different. We went to the ISA World Surfing Games in Japan, and we, I had Kehu and Ricardo Christie in the team, so we're almost kind of battling for the same spot, but we're there as a team. Yeah, it all kind of came together. It was a huge week. Currently have an injury. I did an air and I came down and tried to land really hard and my back foot slipped off and I kind of collapsed over my front knee and, and tore my MCL pretty bad. I've never been injured before. It's almost a kick up the backside for me, you know, I've never trained so much in my life and obviously with the Olympics and, and everything coming up, I've used the time very wisely to kind of let it heal and now I'm in the stages of, of strengthening it. I've been using it as a positive and hopefully I'll come out better and stronger than before. The injury's probably got about a couple more weeks in it. Yeah, so it's coming along. I've been training a lot. Uh, haven't been surfing yet. It's been three months since the injury, so I'm getting pretty excited to go surfing. Far out. Down in Gizzy at the moment. Come down for a trip with the boys. And there's obviously some fun little waves out there, so chucking on the wedding for the first time in ages. Bro, I'm pretty excited. It'll be interesting to see how it goes today. Be just obviously my first surf, so test it out a bit and just get some ways with the boys. Frothing. <laughs> yeah, so I've got this freaking mechanical robo leg. Yeah, hopefully it goes all right. Hopefully I get a couple waves. <laughs> Three months out of the water is definitely the longest I've ever had, so yeah, it's going to be interesting um, to see how the body and the mind goes out there. I'm just super excited to get back in the water, you know. I kind of got, found that love again and appreciation of the ocean. Probably shouldn't be surfing right now, but I just can't help myself. I kind of just want to catch waves and be in the ocean with the boys and be amongst it again. I've missed it so much. But you can tell me what you want, tell me what you need. Are you going to stay, baby? Get up off your knees, yeah. Tell me what you like, tell me what you hate, girl. I can be your man. Baby, we can take the day, I ain't never been okay Yeah, and no, I never been okay Yeah, yeah, and no, we'll never be okay Yeah, just know I never been okay Yeah, yeah, Bro, that was so mean <laughs> So mean to be in the water with the boys A little barrel, see little turns I was just hooting, honestly, every wave that came from Go boys, go! Just loving it Good to be back 
so many good surfers here and so much talent that comes out of this small town. So there's heaps of little nooks and crannies and heaps of waves and just has produced some of the New Zealand's most talented surfers ever, like Maz Quinn and Bobby Hansen, Ricardo. But you can tell me what you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm originally from Ma here, but I moved up here for high school. There's not much going on at Ma here, so um, yeah, I've been floating around here since about then. <laughs> Seeing Maz, Paige and Ricardo make the tour just makes us realise even though you come from a small little country in New Zealand, you can still crack it. Rick's showed the way he's qualified twice, which is like amazingly hard, it's so hard to do, to um, get knocked off and then qualify again. It's, it's harder than doing it the first time. New Zealand, Aotearoa, it's, it's my home. Doesn't matter how many amazing places I go around the world, I'll always know where home is, you know. It's that feeling of belonging. With my kids, I'm always going on and on and on about how I grew up, how much time I used to spend outside and that kind of thing, and they, they get a little bit annoyed at me, but I'm just trying to drill it into them that there's an ocean there that's got endless amounts of fun, it's free, you know, you don't really need Instagram to be happy. Yeah, I try to drill those core little messages into them when I can and when they let me. <laughs> I started playing around with the Surf Academy the year before last. I was thinking, what am I going to do after surfing professionally? And I was like, you know, I've got all this bloody knowledge, I may as well try and share it. Quite tricky to get them to stay focused after a day of sitting there at school. <laughs> they just want to get out there. I really love when something that I say sticks with someone and then I can see the actual improvement. You never really know if someone's taking it in until they kind of do it. So when you do see it and see that improvement, it's a pretty cool feeling. These kids are my younger group. I'm kind of thinking long term with them. It's not so much about the short term kind of goals with these guys, it's more kind of getting them into a routine of trying to improve and have fun. Yeah, we'll probably see the results in a few years time. We've got a lot of good surfers that come from here, we always have. Go to any local beach and you see kids ripping and Hopefully all the younger guys can get backing and guys like Kehu and Elliot that are getting in the top 100, top 50 of the QS and then on to bigger things and you know, hopefully they can achieve their dreams. I can see there's a good batch there if they've got the right guidance. We're pretty lucky with our environment here. There's plenty of good waves around and uh, there's a lot of rich surfing history. You know, all those things just equal keen little surfers. <laughs> I would like to say there, there would be a lot more Kiwi surfers on the tour or trying to do the tour. We've got the talent, but we just happen to be at the arse end of the world. <laughs> My main goal would be to get on the world tour and stay there for as long as I can. After that, make surfing a pathway the same as rugby is for our young Māoris and young Polynesians, because we came from the ocean. And I know heaps of young Māoris who just don't have the backing around here, but surf amazing. It comes down to dedication, consistency. The gold is still there, but it's up to him to get there. What parent wouldn't be proud of their kids when they're doing something that they're passionate about and they're doing it a handi. Kare te kumara e kōrero ana tanareka, which means the sweet potato never talks of its own sweetness. And that's what I kind of envisioned him to be. Just let his actions do the talking. How far can he go? Probably up to him, really. How much of the one to two percenters that he wants to put in to crack it. And when he does, he's still gonna come home, mow the lawns, do the dishes, just to keep him humble. <laughs> I think Kehu has got what it takes to make the world tour. He's got his head screwed on right, he's got good people in his corner. I guess the most important thing is he surfs really, really good. If he doesn't make it within the next three years, I'm going to be extremely fucked off with him and I'll give him a stern word. I never knew a dude named Donaldson at my dairy, just a Hindu dude named Ray. Legendary Evandale Ball, professor of confectionary contemporary sensei.